Good evening. You're watching the Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. We all know the Wall Street Journal recently got smaller. Is smaller better, or is bigger better? Did the Wall Street Journal do it right? That issue tonight will be discussed by two experts that I brought to the show. The first being Len Foreman, formerly, just recently formerly, Executive Vice President and CFO, which means Chief Financial Officer of the New York Times Company. Welcome. Thank Len. you, Jeremy. You want, you want to think about the expert part at the end of the show. Okay. <laughs> we'll re, we'll re-examine that one. And uh, Ed Adarino. And there, Jim. Uh, veteran <laughs> who is at Benchmark <coughs> and uh, uh, follows the uh, Wall Street Journal carefully as well as a lot of other media and newspaper stocks. Okay, now the first thing we want to show the audience is what's happened if they didn't know. I'm showing the, the new Wall Street Journal, which is the smaller one and the overlap over here. That's gone. So the old Wall Street Journal is big. The New Wall Street Journal is small. And let's hear what Paul Steiger, who is the managing editor of the Wall Street Journal, has to say about the change. Unlike some others, we are not agnostic about which channel our readers use. As Gordon said, we want them to use both. The online channel throughout the day to get an edge in knowing and understanding what is happening of importance to business and in print every morning with a carefully selected and edited package of coverage designed to get businessmen and women prepared to begin their days. Len, is he right in saying that it's reasonable to expect that a reader, viewer, however you wish to say, a news consumer, is going to read the Wall Street Journal and then he's going to go to the computer and watch the uh, online Wall Street Journal all day long? Is he going to do both or is she going to do both? That's a, that's a hard question. I know, so, every uh, question's hard here. My, my guess is no. Um, I, I mean, I take, I have a problem with his, with his going in assumption, which is the we want piece. I think um, part of the problem with the newspaper. We want every. We want every right reader to, to, every person to read, to do both. To do both, yeah. Okay, I mean, I think the marketplace will dictate what will happen, not the aspirations or the desires of the publisher. And that's part of the problem with the newspaper business playing catch up, which is, they still want to tailor, and they want the, the, the reader to do something their way. I think the reader's going to decide what they want, and I think um, that the Wall Street Journal is a very different animal than any other newspaper. It's, it's a business publication aimed at people, for the most part, who are quite comfortable with going online and getting their information online. So I think people are going to do what they want to do, and there are going to be some who are going to read the paper, some who are going to go online. The idea that you manage both um, to me, I think, is, uh, is a very optimistic assumption, and I'm not sure it's warranted. Uh, not warranted, Ed Adarino, who uh, has a buy recommendation. I want to let everyone know on the Wall Street Journal stock. Um, I tend to agree with Len that it's, you know, to, to, everybody's not going to do everything, but I think the idea that you've got a captive audience, not like a typical newspaper audience, somebody that's very financially focused will read some or all of the journal, and then during the day, um, either through prompting, if you're a subscriber, you get your online, my online or something, you'll be prompted through the day to survey or scan or go in and out of the online. You're not going to do it all day. You're not going to read everything. Uh, and at least my, my own personal behavior would be that way. But What is your own personal behavior? Well, I, I read some of the journal in the morning, and then because I'm in a subscriber, I get my online news during the day, so I get little prompts. And, do you get uh, prompts? Yeah. What kind get, of prompts do you get? For example, it will say uh, midday uh, online, and uh, I'll click on, and oh, there might be something there I want to hear or see. There might be not, but... Are they customized prompts? Yes, I can customize oh, so them. So what sort of uh, prompts well, do you Well, I got, you know, the media properties, uh, oh, market stories, economy oh. stories, whatever I want. There's a whole series oh. of... And for example, uh, you know, yesterday in the... But that's not what he said. I mean, that's sort of interesting. Yeah. He didn't say, and during the day, we're going to prompt you so you can go on... I mean, the, the assumption was that people go on unprompted. I don't know if well, that's I, fair. I imagine many people might go online Would unprompted. Would you go unprompted? But, that's the um, question I asked for. You know, let's put it this way. If I'm, if I'm uh, watching the market every day and there's an, uh, an announcement uh, or a, a movement in the stock, I'm going to try and find out what went on. And I'll click on Reuters. I'll click on WSJ.com. I'll, I'll try to find out why something happened. 
and uh, it's not always going to be everything every day, but the fact that there is an alternative source in addition to yeah. print is good. And it's the only paper that really can do that because it's got right. a captive audience. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to really care if there's a news story on the giant football team during right. the day. I mean, that's yeah. not going to get right. my attention, yeah. which is one of the disadvantages of the regular newspaper. They have to deal in sort of real life, whereas the journal deals in the business world, which is a little different, as, as Lynn said. Well, as we have two different uh, uh, viewers here in a way. I mean, we can understand that uh, you would be a prime prospect for the well, Wall Street Journal. I mean, you're in the that's where you make your make your money. That's the bulk uh, of the subscribers. Len, Len uh, was maybe still a good prospect uh, for the Wall Street Journal because when he was chief financial officer, he had to uh, keep up to date. But uh, Len, let's ask a little bit about some of the other. Ch ask you about some of the other changes, because it's not only the general thrust which uh, uh, I've talked about, but there's also some particulars. One, uh, it's smaller. Two, it's 10 percent less. Uh, three, and this for me is quite important, I don't know if it is for either of you two, but there's a now a tilt between uh, important uh, news of yesterday, which used to be about 50% in the Wall Street Journal, and it's now become, uh, the current news is 20%, and we're 80% into analyst analytical pieces, that's known as in the trade, the latter being soft news, you can read it anytime you want. and as a, and. Uh, uh, also, the uh, paper is tailored. If you're curious about some stuff, you can't get the answers here anymore. Be uh, not anymore, sometimes, because the stories are shorter, and therefore you have to go. It forces you to to uh, go on the web. Now, do you have any reaction to that as a reader? Because you may read this a little different. But do you read differently than that? By the way, do well, you read the Wall Street Journal? Yeah, I do, and and uh, <laughs> I happen to be a, a heavy online user. But I, you know. The comment I made earlier was uh, was critical of their working assumption, but I happen to agree with the strategy because I think you have to be. He didn't. He said, I think uh, Steiger said he didn't like the word agnostic. I, I do think you have to be agnostic because if people are gonna, if they want your information, they're going to want it in multiple ways, and I think you got to provide that. The question I, I would raise um, about the journal is whether it's it's smart enough to simply say this is going to be about analysis and in-depth reporting and not about the sort of the short news pieces. Um, it's not clear to me that that makes a whole lot of sense. I think it's real smart to get rid of a lot of data, to get rid of statistics. Um, I think there's still too much in the New York Times, for example, that ought to be online. But you still have an enormous percentage of the population that likes the, the tangible feel of paper. And they may still go online, but they may be well, quite unhappy with the current product. So I think the journal may be making a mistake and they've gone too far. Um, it may just be they're ahead of the curve and, and that everybody's going to be forced to move in that direction because the economics are going to dictate the move you make. I mean, this is all being driven um, by the, the fundamental change in economics of publishing newspapers. And they, like the New York Times, are basically lagging the rest of the industry in terms of some of the changes that have been made. Is it lagging? The lagging, because most of, you know, this is now 48, I think they've gone to. Um, 48 what? 48 inches web width, right. uh, excuse me. And, uh, Can't be too technical here. Yeah. Well, you know, most newspapers have been 48 for a couple of years yeah, now. that's true. I say they're just catching up. And they're just catching up. And the Times is, ju is, is doing the same thing. It's just catching up. Um, I think the danger, and I, and I don't, haven't studied it, so I don't know. I don't know what the 10% cut in news hole in, in, in space really means. How much of that was getting rid of statistics, for example? I think that How much the, of it was, was really yeah, cutting I think that to, to, be, to, to be fair to the journal, I think that, and I want to ask you this question. Uh, the journal has said that uh, some part, uh, at least 5%, has come out of the, out of the stock tables. Um, and that's what they say. My own experience in reading the journal now is that the uh, stories I read it for, and I guess I'm not the, a good, I read the journal very closely. Um, but I don't use it, as, as Paul said, to get ready for my business day. I, I read it because it's just a, I think it's a great, great paper. And I like the economic stories. I like the foreign news. I like the way they do stories. I think, I think it's, it's a great paper. And I'm frustrated because I feel pinched on that. And you're saying a little bit of the same. And you're saying it may not be smart. Let me ask you, and particularly with respect to that point, the stock tables uh, in the journal, which were the world's, uh, most complete stock tables and the mutual fund tables by the way they don't talk about the mutual fund mm -hmm. tables the mutual fund tables they've been hacked hacked to pieces I mean all sorts of mutual funds that I can't find there anymore that I'm in 
I'm interested in. Do you think that was a good idea to reduce the stock tables? I mean, you look at them all the time, and you're an investor. No, and now what's your view on that? Um, I, I don't find them that lacking. I'm not a big numbers junkie. I can, you know, I scan the numbers, look at certain things, but uh, you don't follow stocks. I do, but I, I, <laughs> I've, stock I've, had, I've had no trouble <laughs> finding the numbers I want. So if there's anything missing, uh, I haven't missed it. In terms of the content, the analytics, I find actually reading it less. Um, for some reason, there's since since they're being yeah, smaller. I, I mean, I read it. It's faster for me to go through the paper. Yeah, I read now, it so. less too. So well, is that uh, smart? Reading uh, it less for different reasons. Though. Yeah, th yeah, that's true. You're reading it less because you're not happy with. It. He's reading it less because there's more information online. Yeah, and and there's. The, well, the, the, but the now how you look at it, we're reading it less. So yeah, but you know, we're still subscribing, and uh, you know, it's it's part of my daily uh, thing to do. Read the journal, read the Times, Whoa. go online. So. Uh, it, it, it's not affecting me much at all. And I like the smaller size because it's easier to fold. I'm um, getting used to the new print. So net net, I'm at least neutral, maybe a little bit more satisfied with the paper than I was before. I'm told uh, that the biggest complaint the journal has got, uh, and to be fair about the, to the journal about this, the journal has gotten plaudits for this design, and the design is a brilliant yeah, design. Yeah, I think it's nice. But I understand the, the uh, com major complaints they've gotten are, are people who used to read the stock tables who can't read them now. Well, uh, Maybe because I'm there every day. Okay, and let me ask you well, this. Well, that's an interesting piece yeah. because okay. when the Times cut their stock tables out, at the same complaints. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. Same, same complaints because, and, and that what you're dealing with, you're dealing with people's habits and yeah. you're, you're upsetting habits. Yeah. But the bottom line is, anybody who's really serious about following the stock tables didn't get their information from, from the the paper, the exactly. stock tables that were being covered here. Maybe they were only had a couple of personal stocks that were <laughs> showing up. Yeah. Um, but the vast majority of people who are interested in stocks have multiple places to go for exactly. it. So, well, what does that mean? Multiple well, I mean, anybody who's really following stocks probably belongs to a, a service, all right? So they're probably in real time all the time. Stock tables here, if you're just a casual viewer of stock tables, the online tables are going to be more, much more complete anyway. So, yeah, the Times did get, I can't speak to the journal, the Times did get uh, a number of letters, but they were far less than they've gotten from mm -hmm. complaints on other things that have happened over the years. Okay, let's go to the, to the strategy point. Uh, we live in an American economy where usually bigger is better. Now, is smaller better? I mean, doesn't, uh, doesn't smaller uh, go against sort of the American concept? Uh, you know, you've got to be bigger and better. Not, and not it doesn't make any sense. It's a good Dale straw man he's throwing out. <laughs> not in a newspaper. It's easy to fold. Uh, it's easy to read. Uh, it, you know, we're in a soundbite world, and it, it's a little tighter edited, a little more focused. Um, it has a, uh, a nice section on Friday and on the weekends with sort of non-business stuff. And the journal has another advantage. It doesn't have to provide the day-to-day -day news the way the New York Times does. It's got a very targeted editorial product that doesn't, you know, you're not going to get the accident or the plane crash or the Iraq war. You're going to get other stuff. So it, it sort of lends itself to a smaller, handy size instead of having to be a, a newspaper. All right. Now, uh, and so you have a buy on it. Yeah, I have a buy on it. I think their strategy, yeah, first of all, th th they're not stuck in the problem areas that some of the other, news, all the others, there's very little retail in there. So they're not hammered Retail advertising. advertising. And they've, they've got a captive so audience. So we don't have to worry about department stores right. leaving. And so and, and we've got national advertisers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's a national business journal. They're, yeah. they're not competing for news. Yeah. So the, 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 the consumer newspaper is, as Len said, people are getting the news lots of other places. There's not too many other places you can get business news. Right. So the journal's in a very big advantage in that respect. Also, unlike the other newspapers, they've had higher advertising this year than last year. Uh, partly due to Saturday Journal and other things like that. And uh, they got a dollar dividend, and I thought the stock looked pretty interesting in the mid-30s, and I thought some of the strategic moves they were making were going to get them to have better numbers this year. Now, the earnings aren't quite as good as I thought they'd be, but the stock's gone up. Things are looking a little better. Saturday Journal's working. So uh, I had a buy on it, and it's done okay so far. All right. Now, uh, we're talking about strategy. We've talked, each of us, each of you will give me your views on the strategy. Uh, let me ask uh, flat out in terms of uh, <coughs> newspapers generally. Circulation. Uh, circulation in the last reporting period was a disaster largely uh, for newspapers. And I think it's fair to say, this is the program about the digital age, that newspapers and, and magazines are really a, in a shell shock position that uh, only one who had watched this program 10 years ago could have 
predicted. I didn't, I didn't predict that, actually. Uh, circulation down 3% for the journal, uh, something like that for the... It was a little lower. A little lower, 2.5% or something like that for the New York Times. Now we got the new, smaller journal. Uh, what do you look forward to the next time the journal reports? Is it going to be down 3% again? Well, a journal is um, difficult to read in that regard, re in the sense of making sense of the numbers, because of the way they market the, the web and the paper. Um, my guess is the journal circulation was, print circulation was down a very large amount, offset by the increase in subscribers. And so ABC, well, says, the, the Audit Bureau of Circulation, no, no, which produces, I don't understand that. Yeah, the Audit Increase Bureau of in subscribers where? On the, on, the, on the online version. So they're adding the two together? Aren't yes. The Did Audit the Times Bureau, add them together? No, the, no, Audit, Bureau, the Audit Bureau of Circulation, because of the way they price the, the Wall Street Journal, allows them to combine the two. I see. So um, I haven't seen an ABC statement, but my guess is it's pretty hard to determine um, how much of the gains or losses came from print and how much came from online. Uh, if you wanted to pursue that in terms of, you know... Yeah, but well, how do you think it's going to play out? Well, I mean, I think if you go back, take the long view, circulation has been declining for 60 years, <laughs> okay? Um, it has not kept pace with household growth. Um, it's, it's been declining uh, fairly rapidly for about 10, 12 years. Um, the, the bubble this year, I think, was in part artificial because exactly. of exactly. the rule changes by the ABC board, which is the, the body responsible for um, certifying those statistics. Basically, what newspapers have been doing, um, they've been told you can't count bulk the same way. So they've been cutting their bulk circulation. So, for example, if you look, so at, anyway, if you look at the large metro newspapers, yeah. which had 6 to 7 percent declines, half of that was artificial. Yeah. Okay, so but for the, the audience's point of view, it's down, though, right? It's down, but it has been down for 50 years. And the question, the real question, yeah. um, long term, is is there a tipping point? Right. Where when circulation hits a particular level, right. does right. it just fall off the charts? Yeah. And I think the answer to that is, for some newspapers, yes. And it's happened already? <clears throat> no, but it will happen. The next time, maybe this next year? Maybe this year? Maybe the next three to five years. Maybe it's oh, 10 it's years. Three to five years. The Journal, The Times, The Washington Post, um, the, the large newspapers that have a, a good brand and can make the transition to the web are going to weather the storm. Ah, uh, interesting. I agree totally. Um, well, you've never I'll, had a sell on any newspaper <coughs> stock that you uh, ever covered, well, have you? Actually, I did. I oh, had, you did? Well, <laughs> we're not going to go there, but I did have a sell on Dow Jones at one point. Not a oh, you did? But no, Len's <laughs> absolutely right. A lot, of the, a lot of the decline is, is sort of artificial. Um, the, the newspapers are going to squeeze at both ends. Young people start reading newspapers later in life, and they stop reading it earlier in life, so they're getting squeezed. The, the 35 to 60 group is... is and, and there may be a core group there somewhere. I don't know what the number is, but... Um, people will read newspapers for many, many, many years. Uh, it'll stay uh, a, a vital part of the uh, media spectrum, but it, it's going to be tougher for some newspapers to, to go along. Uh, the managements are, gonna, are resizing the cost structure to fit the new uh, size of, of circulation, the new advertising base, and uh, hopefully can build some online revenues over the next three or four. I think the Times is now 6 or 8% of Revenues coming from online, one of the highest in the industry, with a very strong yeah. online brand. So, you know, over time, these companies, quote unquote, I think are going to do fine. It's just going to be a very different mix, a different delivery of product. But the the, the paper product will be around for a long time. Some papers may, uh, as Len said, hit a tipping point, tipping point, and uh, have to figure out a way to survive. You know, Jim, at the risk of um, offending Ed, actually, I won't offend Ed because he's not one of the, the guys who's been saying this. I think the street. The investment community has overplayed. Oh, the totally. Problems. Oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, abs I agree totally. How about do you think the general, well, general well, press has too? Yes. Because I mean, the, the general, general press, press is crying. Well, absolutely. the press, yeah. the press parrots Wall Street. Yeah. It's, it's a, well, let me let me give you a, a, let me give you a reason why I say that. If, if the ad dollars had had stayed at least flat for the last couple of years, we wouldn't be hearing about the doom and gloom, because the circulation statistics are pretty much haven't changed. Well, the Times has been very good. The circulation but, but has been very good. Let me finish my point. Yeah. Excuse and, me. And you look at what drives the newspaper business. And the categories of advertising that drive those, those categories haven't suddenly stopped advertising in newspapers and moved their budgets to the web. Exactly. They're basically cutting their marketing budgets because they are in their own structural problems. Automotive, airlines, uh, the financial institutions until recently. So, so when you see what's going on in those businesses, the real challenge for the newspaper business is you can't rely on the same businesses that supported you over the years. You've got to find new sources of revenue. And some newspapers will do that, and they'll do it successfully. Others, by virtue of the markets they're in, are going to have problems. This year, 
the newspapers in, in smaller markets grew three to five percent. Yeah. Smaller Pre markets. Smaller markets. Pretty healthy growth. It's the large That's metro terrific. newspapers that have been Smaller struggling. markets, really. Absolutely. So the people who live in um, Peoria uh, like to read the paper because they're not going to get local news on a competitive basis from the web. But if you're in Boston, uh, you, you have multiple sources. You got multiple sources, and you might not buy the Globe, and the Globe went down quite a, quite, mm -hmm. quite a bit. Let's talk about alternate sources of income uh, for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, one of their alternate sources of income of, uh, uh, of note is the fact that they charge to go on yes. there uh, now. Is that good strategy? That was a terrific strategy. Uh, think of 1996 or 1990, whatever it was, they launched uh, what was Wall Street Journal Online, and they told people they had to pay. And again, I think because of the captive market, because of the fact that people are sitting at their desk in front of a computer all day, uh, people were able to pay, were willing to pay 50 bucks, whatever it was a year, so they had a, uh, a, a separate source of income. Now 780,000 people are paying 50 or 60 bucks a year, and they're able to make that. The consumer newspapers, for some reason, early on decided. What does that mean? Uh, the Times, the Boston Globe, the no, Washington Post, not the, a news, specialized the, business the, the, the news newspapers. Yeah, the news newspapers. We don't newspapers. have people sitting at a computer every yeah. day. Uh, decided they couldn't charge. There was Yahoo, there yeah. was whatever. And so they gave away the content. Uh, and have a tough time now trying to find a way to get it. Was that a smart decision? Yeah, I'm, I'm not in entire, entirely in agreement with that. Um, I think the Wall Street Journal um, made a decision that they were going to capture the subscriber base because they had a captive audience yeah. with, with business. However, uh, if you look at the economics of online businesses, it's not a subscription business. It is basically an ad-driven yeah, yeah. ad business. So the Times chose at the time because the Times went through a, a, a very difficult process of analysis and came out on the side of not charging, although they're now beginning to charge, mm. um, of not charging because they saw that, at least early on, the, the huge revenue growth would be on the ad side mm. of the business. So the question I would put on the table is what did the for Wall Street Journal forego mm. by charging yeah. for their paper? Good, 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 when the good. Times was growing 30% yeah. a year in ad revenue, now has a hundred-plus million dollar business. Yeah far more than the Wall Street Journal is getting in subscription revenue. So I think that they both went different paths. I think the Times made the right decision for the Times. Um, they couldn't make the decision the Journal made at the time simply because of they don't have the kind of captivity that the Journal does. But I think today, when you've established the brand and you've got the ad revenue model working well, you begin to think about monetizing the subscription base. And I think you'll see not all, but many newspapers do it. Time Select is an oh, yeah. example of that. Um, and I think what you'll see going forward is more parts of the newspaper having subscription pricing. Paid gate, which is you can't get into the journal unless you pay for it. Uh, it's good for the journal, though, among other things, because they add the circulation numbers together, so they get at least yeah, a they've, they've get a psychic. Yeah, they actually managed to, yeah. to, to work it out. Let but me ask I, you I, this, Ed. has got a good point. Maybe they lost a lot of dollars. Yeah. Let me ask you, Ed. You got a buy on the Wall Street Journal, and you got a hold on the New York Times. Why is the journal better than the Times, in your well, view? Uh, again, uh, uh, three things. One, they got the online growth uh, at, in, at the journal. You notice how he looked at me when you yeah. said that. <laughs> uh, secondly, because you know I'm going to ask him the same uh, thing. Uh, the Wall Street Journal is doing better than almost every other newspaper company so far this year in terms of advertising dollars. And thirdly, uh, because they are where they are in the historical cycle, they are now just adding a Saturday edition. They added the so th they've added innovations. Okay. So, but why not to, the Times? Times full of innovations. The, too. the Times is. On the other hand, as Len said, there are some sec, I don't call them secular, there are some secular, cyclical problems face hitting the newspapers. Oh. They have nothing to do with anything except consolidation in retailing, difficulties in autos, difficult. The movie companies used to advertise like crazy. They're not. So there's this transition in the advertising cycle this year, really whacking the consumer newspapers that aren't hurting these guys. You don't see a lot of movie advertising in the journal, and so they're not getting hurt or retailing. So I, I felt there was a couple of things going on. Plus, the journal was a little late getting into cost cutting, and I felt they've had a little more bang for the buck going their way than the New York Times, which has been struggling with big problems in Boston, uh, decline in advertising at the Times. But you know, they've got the online Times, they've got Times Select, new products coming in, major cost cutting, major restructuring. Um, I did upgrade the Times from a, a sell to a hold a little while was ago. Was a sell? Yeah, I thought the, I st didn't I thought, know well, I thought the stock was going to go down because the earnings were lousy, and it did go down. And I made it back to a hold, and it's done okay. Actually, it's up a couple of points, so yeah. it's doing okay. So I, I agree with Len totally. The Times is just going to 
work through the, the, the difficulty. And I think the other end, it's still one of the great brand names. And if, if any company can charge for their online product other than the journal, it's going to be the Times. I mean, so, they ought to charge so for So if, if you were Len For, uh, you are Len For, <laughs> if you were Len Forman, you are Len Forman. If you were Ed Adarino, is that what you would do? Well, I think, I think Ed's um, analysis is, 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 is pretty good. I mean, I think the Times still has to prove that they're going to be able to grow their earnings. I'm pretty confident sitting where I sit that they will. Um, I think the journal, come back to the journal for the minute, um, the journal went, was so far down, far the stock more than was anybody down. else. No, not the stock. The stock held up yeah. reasonably well, but their advertising um, fell much more precipitously I, than I any other do. major publication. Why was that? Because of all because the of, uh, uh, financial, they were, they, financial? They live and die on those, those sectors that drive the Wall Street Journal, the business sec section. And the financial institutions were suffering, got hit very badly. And so they went much further than anybody else and had and have a, a huge upward opportunity. So what you're seeing in the growth in advertising at the journal was essentially starting from a much lower base. Yeah. But having said that, the categories that they specialize in are now doing reasonably yeah. well. Those sectors are doing well. The Times, it talked about entertainment. Movies were 15% of Times revenue a few years ago. Now they're probably 10 or 11%. Um, Let me ask an overall strategic question. Uh, most companies in America take a, a 10 cents profit out of every dollar. It's shown as a 10% margin. That's on average what it is. Uh, newspapers uh, three or four years ago were at 20%, and people in that kind of business have always looked at 20%. Now, uh, with everything that's happened, I think the Times and the Wall Street Journal are both at about 10%. If I'm wrong about that, correct me. But anyway, the question is this. Do you think that a uh, business that is really run at a huge profit uh, I mean, margin, it's almost blasphemous in a sense, if you are religious about newspapers. 20%, um, 30%, some uh, TV stations, 30, 40. Uh, are these sustainable uh, businesses at a 10% uh, margin the way any other uh, business is on average in America? Um, I think over time, yeah, because I think the online dollars are going to continue to grow. They're going to squeeze costs down. Uh, they're going to find a way to find more revenues. The Times has these nice sections, the T section, and the little magazine stuff. It's all very interesting. Uh, they've got those nice Florida papers, which so make a be ton done. of money. I've got to cut so you short because that's okay. guess what? Um, We're out of time. Uh, did the Wall Street Journal get it right, Len Foreman? I think they were on the path again. Okay. Right. Thanks for coming by, Len Foreman. Wall Always Street enjoyed you, Jim Goodell. <laughs> Wall Street Journal got it right, Yeah, Ed I think Arena. they got it right, yes. All right. Thank you for coming by, <laughs> Ed. And thank you for coming by. Come by again and learn more about the digital age for the digital age. I am James Goodale. Good night.